Oh, all right. All right, it is Sunday, June 17th, 2018. And if you've seen some of our other videos, you saw how we had our worm farm set up in our spare room. Um, this is Tim and Debbie from Homesteaders Discovery. And today, Debbie is going to be taking care of the worms. And we've had to make some arrangements here. Um, these are the bins we pretty much started with back in the day on this rack system here. And today we are taking a look at our worms and there's no food so we're going to feed them. This here. They pretty much go through their food now in about a day to two days at the most. So we take our worm food and we just, our worm chow. They go down And uh, we kind of let them go down a little bit first just so that, uh, that we don't sprinkle this dry worm chow on them. They appreciate that. The other thing we do while we're waiting is um, we go through a lot of eggs. So we save these egg cartons, they're cardboard, and uh, we just soak them down and they tend to sink down into the bedding of the bin and it keeps that area moist. Let's see, they're almost all down now. So we sprinkle them with some food and then we spray them with some water and what we usually do is we use tap water and we let the water air out for 24 hours typically um, just to let all the chlorine and whatnot get out of the water. If you were using rainwater <clears throat> or uh, well water it wouldn't be an issue. And we want to use rainwater eventually and test that but for now we don't have the rain catchment system that we need to get set up and then we just spray the egg carton which pretty much acts as a collector for the water in these spaces where the eggs usually sit and then it slowly soaks up the water and then sinks down and wicks down into the bed these are our new shelving systems that we bought. I think we got these at Lowe's um, or Home Depot for about 40 bucks. They're five shelves each. And they will hold two bins. So right now we just have one bin on here. And um, we'll eventually be able to put a couple of little one by boards on top of each one of these and slide another bin on top of that. So we basically can double our capacity of our worm bins on these shelving units. So we bought three shelving units and we're using one for our storage for our supplies. And we have our old uh, horizontal migration bulk bin over here which we are slowly um, removing the adult male worms or I'm sorry the adult worms out of this bin and letting the cocoons hatch and then we'll just keep harvesting those worms from those um, from the bedding um, as time goes on and we'll uh, hopefully get some castings out of that but the main thing is we wanted to be able to salvage the cocoons so that we can continue to grow our worm population <clears throat> Okay, so Debbie's over here doing another bin. Just using the pump sprayer down here that we have. And we only put water in. And you can see how easy it is to manage the worm bins. Just reach in, grab a bin, put it on the table, and look at those healthy, happy worms. 
these guys were looking pretty bad at one point which prompted us to do what we're doing with these new shelving units um, they were starting to escape out of the horizontal migration system bin that we had and we believe it was because the moisture content was was a little too low actually it was a lot low and we just couldn't keep it moist enough so we decided to go to this new shelving unit and get new bins and uh, so far the worms have actually improved I would say 200 percent I mean at one point they weren't pink they were they were dark and they were dehydrated and um, now they're uh, they're pink and they're lively and they're staying in their bins so we believe we're on to something good here with our new system we still throw paper towel in here for now <clears throat> they do eat the paper towel so eventually um, if the food gets low or whatever they'll start eating the paper towels but so far they haven't really done much to these and these have been in there probably for a couple of days now another thing you can do with this system is because this egg carton while it's still in one piece eventually it will break down you can feed one area set the egg carton on top of it and let them feed in that area and create their castings and then you can always slide it over to the other side and feed that area and you can rotate it back and forth which um, allows them to make their bedding and make their castings throughout the whole bin instead of just one location within the bin and as you can see we just basically sprinkle the worm food that we make on top and Debbie's just covering the nozzle so it doesn't spray too hard down on them because she doesn't want to hurt them. <laughs> now we use just um, peat moss in these bins and so far that seems to be working out pretty good sometimes it's a little difficult to tell the difference between the castings and the and the peat moss but you pretty much know when you have good castings when everything is a nice dark color and we'll show you one of those here in a little bit so today we're timing how long this takes us to um, do this process so while Debbie's doing it, I'm filming, so we're trying to figure out what it would take time-wise to maintain all of our bins um, at one time. And that pretty much means just the food and watering. However, when you're sorting the worms, depending on how much you have, that can be a multiple day project. Um, we took a whole weekend, maybe even an extra couple of days in there to set up all these bins and these are some really healthy worms and you can see that they're doing really well um, the, the peat moss the bedding feels really moist it's almost a perfect consistency for them they have a nice pink color they're lively they're moving around so they're they're happy
These egg cartons hold moisture pretty good. We were just using the paper towels at one time, but they tend to dry up really fast. But these egg cartons, I think, are exactly what we've been looking for for keeping the moisture in the bins for a longer period of time. So I'm going to go ahead and let Debbie finish doing what she's doing, and then I'll come back with some of the older bins that are over here and show you the castings and you'll see the difference between that and the peat moss. Okay, real quick guys, I want to show you what I mean by them eating the paper towel. So you can see how they've been munching at this paper towel here, which is fine. They uh, love the cellulose and uh, no big deal. Paper towel is not expensive and it provides them a food source just in case they need it. Um, and they need a variety of some kind, so that's what they do to the paper towels. We have not seen them do anything with the egg cartons yet, but the egg cartons are a little too thick and they take a while to break down. Now this bin here is uh, in question. We don't know how many is left in here, um, but we aren't seeing any after lifting off the hill. Oh, here's this very small one. Yeah, see, there's, oh, there's a, a lot bunch of, of babies in there. There are, and that's why I'm I'm letting them. So we're just letting eat. them be and letting them do their thing. There's probably cocoons in here that need to be uh, finished hatching. But when you're seeing babies like this, you know this bin is um, in its in the process of repopulating. All right, so we're taking out the older bins now. These are some of the bins that we've had going for quite some time. Um, actually the one she just took out maybe not may not be that old. Um, yeah this is one of the newer ones. Go down. Yeah you can still see the peat moss in here pretty good so this is not the one I want to show you. Okay so this bin here is the bin I really wanted to show you guys. We started this bin with pretty much just paper and you can see from some of the previous videos I've done what it looked like and you can see how low it is now. But all of this has been turning into um, just worm castings. We're almost down to nothing left in here and we're going to have to get these worms out of here or add more bedding, one of the two. Um, it's feeling pretty dry, but this paper that's in here is um, helping keeping it somewhat moist. But this was um, pretty much all paper. There was hardly any um, peat moss. I think I put maybe a quarter of this bin was peat moss. It was filled all the way to the top with paper, newspaper, and um, they've broken that down to where it's at now and we've had some really good results. There are a lot of babies in here which means there's a lot of cocoons and which also means they are very happy. So, And then what we do is um, we take our castings and we have uh, basically taking bags that we save from our medications or whatever that they put their prescription pills in or whatever and they have little holes in them which helps it aerate but it also helps hold in the, the moisture and I'll get this up to the light a little bit and you can see how dark that is um, really good looking castings and works wonders in the garden and uh, we've had great results with the vegetables that we've grown with it and the plants and we're real happy with the castings that were that are being produced so now we're going to do the uh, this leftover stuff that was in the horizontal migration system. We're going to see what we've got in there. 
and as you can tell it's pretty empty but we thought it was completely gone of worms but if you look right through here you can see that we have worms coming to the top and we're using the top feed method <clears throat> to give them food and draw the worms up from the bottom and from other locations within the bedding to uh, be able to sort them and get them out of here and into a new bin. But look at the moisture difference where you could tell that's where the egg carton was and that's yes. where it was not. So this is powdery dry almost and where the egg carton is is I could I could make a ball out of that it's moist enough but I just don't want to squeeze it with the worms in there but yep brings them all to the top and uh, we can just pluck them out of there and as the cocoons continue to hatch okay oh, they'll continue to they'll continue to um, hatch and move to the top but if you notice one thing this guy's a little lively here but these look a little darker they're not pink and healthy looking like the other ones and that's because they're sitting in their castings and um, they're not in the best environment so that's what we're trying to do we're trying to get these worms out of here and into a healthier environment and then harvest the castings or whatever's in here but we got to wait for the cocoons to hatch look at how little that one is there's a teeny one in here can't even find him now there's some teeny weeny ones I think I can get this to work without it being. Right, there's a little one here. Too blurry. Yeah, very, very small ones in here. But this is going to take some time. This might take a couple of months um, before we can really do anything with it because it takes a while for those cocoons to hatch. Meanwhile, the adults will continue to hatch, to continue to um, reproduce and make more cocoons so we need to pull the adults out of here and put them somewhere else in another bin and let these cocoons uh, continue to hatch so we can harvest these castings So we started this process, this farm, worm farm, with one bin a year ago. Now granted we've made some mistakes along the way um, and we've learned from those mistakes and we are now uh, implementing new systems but within one year we went from 500 worms in one bin to approximately 5,000 in one year and yeah one two three four five thousand yeah because you've got them over here too yeah so we have we have about 500 no no less than 500 in each one of these <clears throat> they will continue to reproduce and our population of worms will grow exponentially providing they're in the right environment which we hope we've provided for them these bins over here um, they we don't know how many is in there. Uh, we probably have close to, I would say probably close to 2,000 just in that bottom bin. Um, the middle one probably has a good 500 or 1,000 and the top one probably has 500 or 1,000 and then there's probably another 500 in this easily, not counting the cocoons that are going to hatch. So we are planning ahead for, for growth on this and that's why we went with these um, shelving units because we can fit two of these plastic tubs in one on one shelf. These shelves hold about I think 750 pounds or something like that. Um, so we don't want to overload it too much, but we believe uh, one of these bins probably weighs close to uh, I don't know 50 pounds. So I think we have plenty of room to, to go on the weight limitations on this. And we're not even using that top shelf all the way yet. And we still can add another one to the top of that. 
So that is our new worm bin worm farm setup. They seem to be doing well. Got our storage unit there. And we decided to go ahead and make a lot of worm food at one time. So we bought a bucket and we took our ingredients of the cornmeal and the wheat flour and the eggshells and the oyster shells and the oats and mixed up a whole batch of this substance. It's just uh, worm chow and they seem to be loving it. And uh, the, the insect population in here has been reduced significantly. Uh, when we were feeding them vegetable scraps, which we would do if we were doing this outside, um, we started getting a lot of mites and we started getting a lot of um, other insects trying to get in here. And uh, threw our pH off a little bit on the, on the bedding, but we went to this worm chow and it's fairly inexpensive. And if you're wondering why are we doing all this, um, First of all, we do get a product out of it, and that's the worm castings. The worm castings we use in our garden to grow our food. Um, so it's not like we're getting nothing out of it. And um, so far it's been a pretty simple process to take care of them. We still have some things we need to tweak out um, as far as our systems go, and eventually we're gonna run out of room <laughs> in this spare bedroom that we have in our city house. But we are drawing our plans for our cabin out on our homestead property and we have now included a nice size garage in those plans. So we will be able to transfer this system and possibly um, expand it to other methods when we get uh, out on the, on the homestead more permanently. So. That's it for today, folks. Just wanted to show you how our worm farm was coming. Thanks for watching, and don't forget, it's not how much you make, it's how much you keep that matters. And don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.